So let's come from this very scientific and academic stuff to something that's really practically and concerning. So it's uh, about the climate change on groundwater or impact of climate change on groundwater salinity in southwest Bangladesh. I have to say as a preface, I'm the representative of Mr. Rizal Hassan, who unfortunately hasn't got any budget to come to uh, Germany and to visit the FIFLO conference. Uh, nevertheless, I was a couple of times in Bangladesh and I uh, supported them and, assisting and assisted them in developing the model and in uh, coupling uh, the, the models together. Uh, the objective is uh, the movement of the saline front in groundwater towards upland due to increase of human activities, reduced dry period flow and climate change. And they are, um, they should investigate this uh, movement and uh, see the future developments uh, that are to be expected. Um, about the study area, so this is uh, the green uh, area is the, the study area of the groundwater model. We did, it's uh, constrained here by these two rivers, main rivers. There are one uh, uh, additional main river inside here. There are many, many, many of uh, crisscross rivers and small trenches here inside. We will have a small uh, uh, overview later. The total model area is about 1,500 square kilometers. Rainfall is that very important or impressive. It's up to 2,000 millimeter per year. Um, the area is influenced due, uh, very severely due to the withdrawal of the Ganges. Ganges is flowing here, so all this model is part of the Ganges uh, Delta. Um, yeah, there, so the dry season salinity increased, uh, very uh, significant. Um, the soil is... Uh, the Typical soil there for floodplains, for the Ganges floodplain, all is considered as a Ganges uh, floodplain. And yeah, the aquifer is mainly consisting of uh, semi and unconsolidated fluvio deltaic element, elements. So this is the uh, promised figure. So this is the Ganges Delta. Ganges is coming from here. This is the Bay of Bengal. This all is uh, Bangladesh. You see all this den high, very high density of these uh, small rivers. The model area is located here in that part. So this one, Rupka, is the right river, and this one is the left river. And you see this high, very high density inside of the model area that's not uh, implemented into the model, not, not, not all of them. Um, uh, we have in the model area there, and in this area of Bangladesh, very low relief. You see these numerous challenge, uh, ch channels there. The salinity exists there for a long time, and everybody knows that is, it, it is existing there, but it has increased significantly over the last years or over the last decades. And the main reason for this significant increase is the reduction of upland fresh water flow because all the upstream countries are in use of more and more fresh water um, due to the, the, the higher industrialization uh, there and all the water is missing here downstream then in, in Bangladesh. Uh, yeah, um, this nevertheless is the main um, resource for fresh water for the Bangladesh people and all we know is that Bangladesh is one of the largest growing uh, industries, industries of the world and uh, there are in huge um, a need of fresh water for the industries and they take the fresh water somehow here of these regions from the deeper aquifer and that also um, causes uh, a bit or causes this, this increasing salinity there. Um, 
So we did uh, this uh, model area, IWM, which uh, was the, the, the company that's doing that in, in uh, Bangladesh, has uh, seen very soon that they need observations so for basis of any modeling. And they started a, a large data collection program in March 2012. So it lasts now for three years. And they had uh, found very much um, observation points or wells that were suitable to uh, establish there are any divers and any data collectors. Uh, they uh, built new wells or constructed new wells and constructed new observation points. And especially, and that's something that's very good, they constructed, constructed well lines uh, perpendicular to the rivers. We will see that here in this uh, view. So they have at each point also a river gorge and they constructed in different distances from the river perpendicular to that observation point. Each of them is recording a temperature, water level and salinity. And that's uh, I think something that's mm, um, 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 were very important for, for each um, model calibration and for, for each uh, prognosis uh, or scenario we want to do. Um, they uh, had done um, very many model activities before we started the groundwater modeling or the, the coupled uh, modeling. They had a large rainfall runoff model, a hydrodynamic model, and uh, a large model for the Bay of uh, Bengal, mostly hydrodynamic and uh, rainfall runoff. And after that, we started together to set up a smaller surface water model for this model area I showed you, and a groundwater model, and we coupled those two together with our IFM module, which works very fine. So that's uh, an, an overview over the models they had. So they had some coarse grid model over the complete Bay of Bengal and some small scale models there. And there's also uh, a large 1D model they, they have. So this is an overview over the 1D models uh, they have um, for different types of investigations. So they do uh, morphological simulations or quality simulations or purely hydrodynamic uh, simulations. That is uh, the part that we are looking at with our groundwater model there. That's the fee flow model. Um, and it remembers me and my first time when I start modeling. It has uh, uh, nearly 10,000 nodes, so it's very um, very small uh, mesh, a pretty small mesh, and that's simply due to the to the, the um, PC capability in Bangladesh. So they are at the stand and at the status where we were for 15 years ago, and uh, we had indeed problems to run that model, it's, which is very 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 small. And uh, nevertheless, we need. Um, some um, we, we, we invested some time to develop uh, um, a suitable mesh that um, fulfills all the, the preferences we, we had to do. So we need this refinement along the river where we assume higher salinity. Uh, we have to, to uh, regard the capability they had. So it's not easy to create a simple mesh it's running very fast on very uh, small machines and give suitable results at the end. Uh, the MIC-11 and the FIFLO model were coupled with our IFM uh, module. So you see these are the coupling points there. Um, we are exchanging the water levels from uh, the, the, the MIC-11 model to FIFLO and re-exchange the fluxes from the fee flow to the MIC-11. So we had that. And we did not only that hydraulically, we did that all also with the salinity. So it was a full coupled with HD and AD. Um, yeah, we did the model verification. 
for the time period of one and a half years. Uh, you see these are um, some water levels uh, curves uh, or groundwater, groundwater heads. So it looks um, quite similar and we are, we are very happy to, to get those results. We had also um, good matches or yeah, simil similar data sets than for the salinity, even if they are not as good as, as the water levels, of course, should be. Um, yeah, so that's the model, uh, the result of the model verification, what we, what we see there. So those are the observed water levels and uh, interpolated uh, water levels to the, to, to, the, to the areas. That was also then bit our starting conditions. And that is what we resulted. Of course, those X, we do not know if they are um, probably um, ob wrong observations or uh, we are not sure, but they are not as important. Most important is, is that you see here that the salinity starts to uh, to seepage into the into the groundwater, and we have this higher salinity along these rivers, and that is that what we would expect also here along this main river. And so we had some observation points at that at, at that region, and they they show those results also. Uh, from that on, we start to do some scenarios. Uh, we applied um, some of or one of this IPCC scenario is the A1B, and we did it with two conditions. So one condition is that all the hydrological data um, and uh, that all the existing uh, features will stay the same. So all the the the, the crop the, the crop coverage or domestic purposes, uh, irrigation, and the, the water demand stay the same. So that's the option one. And we did the second uh, option where we assume um, uh, increased groundwater abstraction for future demand uh, management, this considering household or considering household irrigation and this industrial uh, demand. So that is the uh, human influenced uh, condition. We uh, did the runs for uh, until the year 2050, and uh, we um, compared how the salinity distribution will look like, and we see that this seepage of or this higher salinity along the rivers will get even higher as it is in 2013. We see what is the distribution, the future distribution of the salinity. Um, how far does it reach into the groundwater uh, body? And this is for uh, the option one. And we did the same for the, the option two. So that's the right uh, map that you see here. And this is uh, for um, a comparison, the, the, op the option one. So we can compare directly what, what happens due to the, to the higher human re uh, water demand and we see here a little bit so that's the most uh, important result that salinity has increased very strongly along along this this river so there is more more uh, seepage into the into the uh, groundwater uh, body um, as a result uh, they um, uh, um, defined some uh, salinity zones with uh, distinct um, concentrations. Uh, they, we have this fresh zone, for example, with less than 1,000 milligram per liter uh, salinity, and it will change in the option one run, so without the human uh, influence, the higher human influence, and uh, it will be a, a three percent less uh, in 2015 than in 2012 and the saline zone will increase about uh, two percent and if we have the same table for the option two that's the one 
then you see the decrease of the fresh zone will be minus or will be three three percent a bit more than than the option one run and the, the increase of the saline zone will be also more uh, than than the option one run so these are the both in comparison um, it, it looks now the results looks now that as if the, the the human intervention will be very small but if you look at the area of the square kilometers, so there are some square kilometers missing uh, in the in the fresh zone, and some square kilometers more where we have a saline zone. And what is also important is that, is that most of the wells and most of the cities and uh, or the villages are located along these rivers, and uh, they are not located somewhere in the backlands. They are located along these rivers because these rivers are also the main traffic uh, ways, and and then they will be affected most by this changing salinity in future. I will close with this uh, slide. I think I'm in time still. Uh, just to show you what we have done with uh, the modeling and with coupling the fee flow model to the Mike 11 model. And I think it's one of the first times where we did that, not only with the hydrodynamic uh, models, but also with the uh, AD uh, uh, models. So thank you very much for your attention, and please ask. <laughs>